The Good Morning Show and more. It was about five years later, in 1960, when some events at the station conspired to really change Bill Ragsdale's life. So the story goes, and I heard it told more than once, the station apparently wasn't following the network rules regarding when they should cut to network shows or which shows needed to be carried. Hence, the station finally lost its NBC franchise. This meant that the Dave Garraway morning show today disappeared, and some of the viewers really liked that show. In inimitable style, the station effectively said, we'll do our own show, and that's what they did. Frank Pepper, the brother of Senator Claude Pepper, a champion for seniors, was one of the anchors, and so was Willie the Weatherman. My dad was called on to play the organ. The station finally bought a good Hammond and chit-chat with Frank and whoever the other anchor du jour was. Dad also gave the weather and sometimes the news. He also often sang while he was playing the organ, usually his version of some popular novelty song. Dad really liked the song, I Love Onions, had the immortal line, I love onions, ooh la la. In fact, Dad could really ham it up with such songs. However, it was Frank who actually gave most of the news and was the very serious one on the air. What they called the Good Morning Show really turned out pretty good, and the show is still going even today, 2019. Dad was a staple on that show for about 14 years. Frank Pepper also remained until near when he finally died. At any rate, despite the sometimes stormy relationship among the Good Morning Show regulars and irregulars, Dad continued for all those many years. I don't know how he kept doing it all that time. He must have really enjoyed it, but maybe he didn't dare stop. After all, it was indeed another way to earn some money, and such a thing was always desirable. There were many funny episodes that occurred behind the scenes at the TV station. Many of these also happened on the air and resulted from the same game of break up the announcer that was often played in the radio days. However, if an announcer tripped and stumbled his or her words, the public could see it all happen live. Also, if a performer started laughing uncontrollably at something happening off camera that the viewer could almost never see, it was kind of a strange sight indeed. Anyone watching the program would see the announcer suddenly start giggling and sputtering, off out of control, and doubled over with mirth. There was apparently no reason that the viewer could see. However, it was fascinating and not a little like watching a train wreck. You knew but still wondered about the end. Eventually, composure was gained or they cut to a commercial. Without a second-powered camera, station policy at first, they couldn't cut to another scene. Dad told of people placing inane little funny remarks, so they thought, interspersed in the copy hanging from the camera. An announcer would be reading text on the air when suddenly the text would abruptly end, followed by something like, Now where are you? Dad once told of someone entering the studio while he was on camera and doing something quite infantile. Somehow Dad kept going, but it was very hard. Of course, there were the other annex by neighboring woodland creatures, and you never knew what they might do. Some of the funny moments were completely unintended. Many of the people advertising at the station insisted on doing their own spots. However, they may have never been on TV before. This, of course, was the appeal of the whole thing to them and were completely inexperienced and on train. Hence, seeing them on the tube was hilarious to us kids, and it may have been the same to many other viewers as well. However, I suppose that we as kids were goaded in our laughter by comments that Dad made later. Yet the performers did make some amazingly funny gaffes on the air. Though everything at first was live, and anything that could happen often did happen. Much of the spontaneity and outright fun disappeared after the use of videotape became more prominent. Television is indeed an unusual business. Not many are able to cope with its eccentricities and egocentricities. It was that way then, and I'm sure it is in many ways the same today. I may be wrong, but I'm entitled to my opinion. <laughs>